Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. My name is Master Paul, and I am coming at you on this live stream today from Honolulu, Hawaii. Today's date is February 23rd. It's one of those short months where it just goes by way too fast. So I'm very, very grateful to be with you here today. This is the fourth day in this week, the fourth day in this series on forgiveness and how we can use it to bring a uh, blessing to various areas of our life. On Monday, focused on forgiveness and self-talk, negative self-talk, self-deprivation. On Tuesday, we focused on forgiveness in relationships. And on Wednesday, <coughs> yesterday, we focused on forgiveness in its direct association to finances. For anybody new watching this, highly recommend you become familiar with my Facebook page, friend me, and watch those. They are a little long in that they take an hour just like the live stream, but if you would like to have some major shifts in your life in any of those areas, then I would suggest taking the time out of your life because each live stream is, is loaded, uh, just as this one will be today, with significant sacred wisdom, guidance, and insights to how you can transform these major, major uh, areas in your life that tend to bring us some blockages. And then today will be no different than that. Today, I will be focusing on health, emotional health, mental health, physical health. This uh, live stream is dedicated to sharing with you how you can maintain the optimum levels of health in these three areas by um, utilizing the sacred and soul wisdom that has been uh, extrapolated throughout the, the, the many, many eons of time. Uh, the wisdom that my teacher, Dr. Master Shah, uh, has brought to humanity is very basic wisdom, love and forgiveness. But one of the unique things about my teacher, Master Shah, is he reminds us how we can apply it in almost each moment in our life. He gives us real practices and opportunities. And what happens when those who apply this wisdom on a daily basis to these areas of blockage in our life, we far start to find some significant shift in those areas that, that allow us to maintain the highest health and wellness uh, as much as possible in any of those areas. And so today I'll be focusing on that. So that's uh, an announcement for all those that are new. Uh, for all those that are just joining me, welcome. I'll take a moment and connect with you. <coughs> Aloha, Tammy Hunter. Welcome, Kristen Rojas. Aloha, Elizabeth. Thank you for coming. Aloha, Dana. Aloha and welcome, CJ. Welcome, Zilki. Welcome, Ben. Ben's uh, been coming in a lot lately. Good to see you, Ben. I'm happy that this is serving you. Welcome, CJ. Aloha Angie, Aloha Sharon Dodd, welcome Linda. Aloha Mary Halpin, welcome Pat. And Pari is tuned in today, welcome Pari. Thank you so much for joining. And so prior to uh, going live, I usually meditate and connect um, with, you know, the Creator, my Source. And I ask, you know, how should I present today? What should be the focus? A lot of what I share is in flow, and some things are very specific depending on the guidance that I get. So today, I, my encouragement uh, is to pay attention as there will always be some new guidance and wisdom released that can assist us. And one of the unique things about forgiveness, as I mentioned in the beginning, is that we tend to only apply it <clears throat> when we have done something wrong to another and they have brought it up to us and we're in a position where we don't really have a choice in the matter so then we have to grow on some level we have to uh, uh, be responsible on some level or in some cases we just say I'm sorry just to get away from the uncomfortability of that moment so for the vast majority of us we walk through life without any true connection to what is forgiveness and the power and significance of it. Now you look at the, the many different areas that a lack of it can impact us. So what is a lack of forgiveness? It is, it is being in a place of a lack of empathy. It is being in a place of ego. It is being in a place of a lack of alignment. 
uh, with our highest self. And so what you're going to be receiving information on today is how you can become more aware of those areas where we're out of alignment so that you can use this most significant attribute known as the power of forgiveness and we can apply the power of soul and the combination of these two can bring about the greatest possibility of sustaining the highest optimum health for your state of mind, for your state of emotion, and of course for your uh, physical health and well-being. So let us first, uh, let me connect with everybody else and then <coughs> uh, we'll do a uh, connection for all of us. Welcome Doug Ferrari, welcome Stephanie, welcome uh, Richard, good to see you here again Richard, welcome Mary, and aloha si, hopefully everything is going well with you and your uh, your soon to be born child. It's midnight in Scotland. Wow, Mary coming in late. Welcome, Joanne. Also coming in late shift. Welcome, Barka. Welcome, Tawana. And Robrett. Good to see you, Robrett. And Aloha, Deborah Knight. <coughs> so let us connect first, heart to heart, soul to soul, by placing our hands in the soul light, soul service hand position which is the left hand in front of the heart center, the right hand gently pointed towards heaven. Welcome Kristen, welcome I'm Johnny. So close your eyes, let us fully connect. <coughs> Dear all beings of light serving the plan of the light side, all beings including angels, healing angels, archangels, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, Beloved Buddha, beloved Kuan Yin, all lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, masters, ascendant masters, the soul of the planets, stars, galaxies, and universes, soul of our beloved Mother Earth, our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. We love you, we honor you, deeply appreciate you, and respect you. Beyond grateful for the opportunity to be present to your love and your light. We ask most humbly that you please be with us here today to assist us to have the greatest understanding of this soul wisdom. How we can utilize the power of forgiveness to bring balance and sustain the highest optimum health and wellness for our mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, for our uh, emotions and for our physical body. We're very grateful. Dear the soul of the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony <coughs> transmitted to all souls in all universes. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We invite you to please turn on and at this time please join us. We invite all souls in all universes to chant this source soul song of love, peace, and harmony to serve in whatever way is most appropriate. We are deeply honored and grateful. So for those that are new, please uh, keep your eyes closed and receive the blessings. For those that uh, are familiar, keep your eyes closed, offer the blessings. Let us join together. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula ha li lula, lula ha li lula. Wo ai wo xin her ling, wo ai tran ran li, wang li hing rong her mu shi shong, shong ai ping on a she. Shang I ping on a she. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace and harmony ha 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 thank you thank you thank you 
So for those that are unfamiliar, the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony is an unconditional universal servant. It is currently in over 50 languages, and Kristen, if she has not already, will be posting links that you can download the PDF. You can also download the MP3. The, uh, the song itself has had the copyright removed. There is a calling to gather 1.5 billion, billion people to chant this song. And so it's our encouragement that you play it 24-7 in your home, at your business, at your office. It can be in volume one. It matters not the volume. But it is a tremendous service because the, the blessings bestowed and the frequency in this Source Soul Song has the highest possibility of bringing love and peace and harmony to all of your environments. And it could significantly bless other souls. So um, you can find out more if you look for those links. So welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Tawana, to Luna. Welcome, Luna. Welcome, Master David. Welcome, uh, Deborah from Boston. Good to know where you're from. Welcome, Nicole Mitchell. And Aloha, Monica. Welcome, Stephanie Cannon. And if I have not mentioned your name, please forgive me. I did not see it pop up. Um, if you have not already, please hit the share button. Let other people know about this live stream. They might not see it live. They might watch a recording, but it could be exactly what they have been asking for in the silence of their own prayers. You never know when you can affect somebody's life positively and bring a, a huge benefit to them by a simple share. So today is focusing on how we can bring about balance, alignment with with the different areas of our life that are out of balance. Now this includes the physical health, the emotional health, and the mental health. In order to sustain and maintain the optimum, highest levels of these in our life, we want to take a look at the areas that are not in alignment. And we want to utilize the power of forgiveness to bring about uh, uh, realignment to these areas that are not the where place we would like them to be. So I spoke earlier about how most of the time we only apply forgiveness when we're kind of put in a box. We do something wrong or we upset our spouse or, or someone feels like we've done something wrong to them and we don't necessarily agree. But to make things easier, we go ahead and go through the forgiveness process, so to speak. Most of us do not look at this as a as something that could truly, literally bring significant resolve to the various aspects of our life, just by applying it with awareness. And this is the key. In order to bring about any form of, of alignment and balance to these areas where we could be having significant suffering, we want to first of all stop and recognize that each and every moment, each and every conversation, each and every thought, word, and action has the propensity to bring about uh, health and wellness or a lack thereof. It has the possibility of bringing to us uh, more abundance, more flourishing. It has the possibility of bringing to us more gratitude and harmony in our lives, or it has the possibility of bringing to us a lack of all of those. So it has to do with the nature of our thoughts, words, and actions. And if we can pay attention to each moment a little bit more every day, we can discover the power of this uh, uh, significant action. Now yesterday I was focused on forgiveness in relationship to our finances. And one of the slices of wisdom that came through in this communication was that you need, and this is, this is a teaching from Master Shah, that we need to instantly ask for forgiveness when we have a negative thought. When we have a judgment or a criticism about somebody or a condition. When we look at that bill and we have a negative thought. Whatever it is that is negative, we want to instantly ask for forgiveness. And so that can absolutely be applied. When you take a look at the areas of our life, there are many, many, one of the pandemics, if you will, of humanity is emotional conditions right now, which are also very closely associated with mental blockages. And what happens is it starts at the level of thought, wherein a person receives information, either they, they uh, received it on their own or they received it from a peer and they've accepted it as a truth. They've accepted it as something that, okay, this is part of 
who I am. This is part of my ego. This is part of how I'm going to look at life. And this piece of information they received could be accurate, but it could also be something that is not serving them. And it could cause them to, uh, to do actions. It could cause them to say words towards others uh, that bring about a spiritual debt. So let's say, for example, that we here uh, up here, we're growing up, we're three years old, and we live in a place, we'll use America as a good example, where um, there was a great deal of prejudice. And um, you maybe, for example, were in a white family, and uh, the parent, because they were taught about prejudice, they spoke in a prejudiced manner. Maybe they said something about the uh, African-American culture in a very derogatory manner. So as a three-year-old, you don't know any better. This files in your brain and you accept it as a thought because they're your parents. You know, they must be right. And so then later on in life, there's this negativity that runs through your thoughts. Whenever you see a person that's African-American, you don't know where it comes from or why it's there. That negativity just comes out in the form of a thought. You might even have spoken a word or two earlier on in your life. But now that you're a little bit older, you're a little bit better about that, but maybe the thoughts are still there. So in this example, this is an excellent place that you can apply forgiveness. Because if it is not addressed, and this is just one of a billion possible examples, then what is occurring at that time is additional spiritual debt. And this can impact our health and well-being, not only in, in, the, in the emotional and mind level, but also on the physical level. One of the foundational teachings that Master Shah brings to us is that, and I spoke on this substantially yesterday in relationship to finances, but it applies to other areas of our life. It's on page 110 of the Soul, Mind, Body book. And I'm paraphrasing, but he says that our spiritual virtue and our spiritual debt has a direct association to our wellness in the areas of our relationships and the areas of our health. It could even impact the length of our life. Isn't that interesting? So just because we carried forth a thought that we accepted as true, that may not be true, we could, because we're not addressing it in the present moment, when we know better, we could be generating additional spiritual debt. This could then bring to us emotional blockages, mental blockages, and so forth. This is where we can apply forgiveness on a consistent basis. So as you go through each and every day, your task, your responsibility to your soul and your soul's journey is to awaken to the places in your life that you are not serving your soul in its journey. And pretty obviously, if you're doing judgment or criticism to self or about and to others, if you're doing actions to self or to others that is harmful in any way, and you know what is harmful, Harmful is anything that is obviously not loving. So you have a responsibility to your soul and your soul's journey to start paying more attention to these areas. The power of forgiveness can then be applied to bring about substantial and significant shift. So I'll give you a true example. I mentioned that yesterday. Some of you are new today. You might not have heard this example. When you... Uh, This is this example. This is a, a student that I have been working with for about a month or two. She stumbled across this live stream. Uh, her soul appreciated the wisdom. She started to stick around, listen to more of it. She started to apply some of the suggestions that Master Shah has brought to us. He brought to us the 10 Da's, love, forgiveness, compassion, light. We already know these, but he brought the deeper significance of them, how to apply them in our life. So this student, uh, had been making some very significant shifts and she received a healing and transmission system to open her message center and release blockages that were associated with the condition in the in the medical industry they call it depression so uh, we don't make any claims that we can assist people with that we don't say that we can heal them or anything like that but we offer a blessing that could potentially bring about balance and alignment she received that blessing and in her case, she started feeling quite a bit better. Instantly, the very next day, she had a 9 out of 10 scale pain in her female uh, area, a little bit right near the ovaries. 
And so she texted me and she said, wow, this is, she, she had no clue that they could have been connected. And she said, wow, this is very strange. What is this all about? So I got on the phone with her. I checked and I asked, you know, have in the past, in this, in this time, uh, have you had any significant um, suffering in this area? And she said, yes, um, early on before the children, uh, I had, and she named some medical label for it. I had heard the name before. I knew it was quite a painful experience. But um, she said that was many, many years ago. But it happened to be the same kind of, of suffering in the same physical area. And so I said to her, I checked uh, guidance, and I said, you know, this is an unwinding. There is an association with this, associated with an emotion that you were holding on to at that time. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but when we did this blessing for the, um, the imbalances in your message center, in your heart center, then this came up also to be released. And so we did a practice and I offered a blessing and this 9 out of 10 scale pain literally instantly left. Thank you, Divine. Now, the story goes on. Uh, about hmm, a week to two weeks later, she started having a significant pain that vacillated between a 6 and a 10 in what's called the SI joint, which is the area in the bottom of the pelvic uh, down near the um, uh, bottom of the spine. And she's been to see the doctors and MRIs and all that, been taking pain meds. Uh, they don't have any answers. They can't really define or discern what it is. And she's not very pleased with the meds as she's been on them for a great deal of her life. Uh, and she knows that it, it does not do well for her. She was doing them to offset the 610 scale suffering. And so um, she happened to watch Monday's live stream. Do you remember what Monday's live stream was? Removing negative self-talk, uh, honoring ourself, and moving away from a lack of self-esteem, using the power and principles of forgiveness. That's what this whole week is dedicated to. And so she followed along with this live stream. Now, this was two or three days later. I just got this message yesterday. So she wasn't even live with us. This is just on recording. And she texted me, and she said, Oh, my God, I cannot believe what just happened. I just followed your live stream. I just did the practices. This pain is completely gone. Is that possible? And I, I said, yes, it is absolutely possible because our sufferings on the emotional level, on the physical level, and on the mental level have associations to our spiritual debts. You've heard this information before, but I tried to give it to you in different ways so that you can receive it in different areas of your consciousness. So in, in this experience with this uh, student, she was very, very surprised. Uh, I have to say, I was surprised as well at the significance of the shift but I was not surprised at the result and its association. I tell you this story so that you understand it does not matter what area you are suffering in. It doesn't matter. Today we're focusing on health and well-being of the, of the uh, uh, mental associations, the emotional associations, the physical health associations using the power of forgiveness. When she was doing this forgiveness, she was not thinking about this six, seven, eight, nine, ten pain in her, uh, in her uh, lower spine area. Her, her thought was not in any sh way, shape, or form about the forgiveness practice for negativity on self and its association with that. But it left. Isn't that curious? So that tells you that the intelligence of the soul world, the intelligence of our beloved Creator, and the intelligence of the power of forgiveness can bring about significant shift in your life. What does it require? It requires, number one, awareness, vigilance, walking through life numb, paying no attention to your thoughts, paying no attention to how your words are affecting other people, paying no attention to your choices uh, and your actions. That is what creates more and more of the suffering you're not enjoying. doesn't matter what it is. Now, there are as you just saw, this was an indirect association. How could it be that a negative mindset could be causing a physical pain? It's an indirect association, but it is nevertheless something that 
proven to be true in this example. So when we apply forgiveness, it is not always necessary to know the specific reasons or the specific associations, as you could see with her. She did not apply one to create a, a release of the other. She simply did the work. And so this is such a huge aha moment. Welcome, Millie. Welcome, my buddy, Adrian. Good to see you both. Let me uh, take a drink. Now, Master Shah shares with us that a one sentence secrets about forgiveness. Forgiveness brings inner peace and inner joy. When we do not forgive ourselves or others, we are in a place of a lack of peace and a lack of joy. Anybody want to sign up for that? Does anybody really want to be in a place where there's no joy and no peacefulness? If you have a lack of joy and a lack of peacefulness in your life, this means you have not done enough forgiveness. Where? You say, well, where? Where do I need to do forgiveness? All you need to do is identify the various places of suffering. Those are the obvious ones. And then you have total control over bringing about more peace and more harmony, more joy into your life by paying attention as you walk through life in the different areas. Okay? You have your children. You can definitely do forgiveness with them. You have your parents, unless, you're, unless your relationship with your parents is stellar, and even if it is, you should do forgiveness. But you also have yourself, you know that. Of course, you have your physical body parts. Most of us have some sort of suffering. I have some left arms going on. And so, in, in my uh, uh, forgiveness practice, I ask for forgiveness of all those I may have harmed or my ancestors may have harmed for the area of the left arm any area associated with the left side of the body if you have a suffering that has a label such as anxiety, depression etc then you ask for forgiveness for this in any time that you may have offered wrong thoughts wrong words and wrong actions that could have brought about those same conditions upon other souls there's a reason why we have sufferings. It's called a spiritual debt. The way to recognize it is to see where your suffering is. If you have negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs, you have ego or attachments, the power of forgiveness can be applied to these as well with great success. One of the things that's, that is important is consistency. Consistency is Truly key. I have to do a bunch of it keeps skipping. Give me a moment. Okay. You might be hearing me and seeing me, but it's skipping on my end, so I'll continue to offer this blessing while I connect with you. Kristen says, I recall one of my first adult real forgiveness events. Long before I met Master Shaw, I recall vividly that one of the biggest emotions that came up was relief. Yes, relief. It's a very, very powerful uh, inner peace. Yeah. So when we uh, move into responsibility, move into awareness, we can bring about significant shifts in our life. Why do we continue need to repeat it again and again? Why must we say um, the same thing again and again? Because we're not going deep enough, number one. If you find yourself on day two, day three, or day four, repeating the same thing as you did before, I'm so sorry for causing you um, um, depression. And then on day four, day five, you're bored of saying the same thing. This means that your heart is not connected. This means that you truly don't grasp the depth of what may have occurred to the others. It's very, very important to recognize that a authentic forgiveness can move mountains. How is it that a six, seven, eight, nine, ten on a pain scale suffering that went on for weeks dissolved instantly with one forgiveness practice? The authenticity 
makes a significant difference. So if you've had any form of long-standing suffering, be it consistency, negative judgments and criticisms towards self or others, be it a uh, significant blockage on the emotional level, deep worry, deep grief, deep uh, 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 anxiety or depression, uh, significant amounts of anger, doesn't matter what the emotion, if it has been there and it is bothersome and you don't know what to do about it, you want to take a look at what kind of suffering am I having? Now, anger, we usually call suffering upon others. We um, sometimes, you know, we're, we're at, mad at ourselves afterwards. You know, we're guilty, if you will. But typically, um, that's one that we have to really pay attention to how we bring suffering to others through our anger. When you look at, for example, depression and anxiety, those are in, internal. Those are self-sufferings. We know very clearly, if we have those kinds of conditions, just how much our suffering is. We can write volumes on the suffering. If it's a condition of grief, we understand just how much suffering that is. Now, on the emotional levels, um, when you are in a place of negative judgment, negative criticism, uh, are you also that same person? If you're a judger and a criticizer, are you also the same person that feels like you're a victim of people's judgment and criticism? Do you see the boomerang effect? Do you see the spiritual debt and the way it comes back around to you to remind you this isn't the wisest thing to be doing? So these areas, the physical shows you where you need to offer forgiveness. You have a pain in your knee, you offer forgiveness for the knee. Do you know how much pain you have in your knee? Is it a nine out of 10 scale? You know how depthful that suffering is every area of your life you already have a very good grip on the level of that suffering this is the key in an authentic forgiveness how can you go into a deep forgiveness if you don't already know what that suffering feels like so if you're just going i'm sorry for causing you depression i'm sorry for causing you depression i'm sorry for hurting your knee i'm sorry for hurting your knee that's not going to work those souls that were suffered, that those souls that were harmed, that um, have brought about the opportunity for you to remember that, have given you the opportunity to, to clear it through authentic forgiveness, this is what is called spiritual debt. And so, since you're very clear on the suffering, why wouldn't you do a forgiveness that recognizes that? Dear the souls, that I or my ancestors have brought such great suffering to. I recognize through my own suffering with this depression in this example, that I have considered taking my own life. I have uh, uh, been in a mental fog, unable to serve my loved ones, unable to even earn a living. I have been unable to have a social life. You go through the list of all the ways you've suffered. I can't imagine anyone else having this set of experience as a result of something I may have done. But I know how spiritual debt and spiritual virtue works. Other areas in my life are fine, but this area is not so good. So I've come to the understanding that I have significant spiritual debt here that either I or my ancestors may have brought to me. And if I or my ancestors have done things, had thoughts or words or actions that brought about these kinds of conditions in your world, I bow down to you with the deepest, deepest regret and sadness, and I so deeply apologize. That is an authentic forgiveness. It is authentic because you are recognizing the depth of their suffering because you have been able to see it in yourself. When you do this to the different areas of your life, finances, your relationships, it matters not. Just identify the place that is out of balance. When you flip the coin, when you go into your suffering and then flap it to the other side and you do it consistently every day, if that's what it takes, it is highly unlikely that you will not start to see a lot more light and love and joy and peace and harmony in your life.
you will discover much higher opportunities for gratitude and the ability to remain in gratitude. You will discover a lot less complaining and you will enjoy quite a bit more love in your life because you self-cleared your spiritual debts. That is the power of forgiveness in relationship to our health in all levels, physical, emotional, mental. So we're going to do a practice now. One of the things that Master Shah has empowered us with is, is um, tools. Tools come in many forms. They come in the forms of his books, Soul Mind Body Medicine. They come in the form of the, the very special empowered calligraphies. They come in the form of some of the downloads, treasures, and transmissions that we can receive through a master teacher, through a master Shah, or through some of his books. They come in the form of the source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. These are tools. There is the uh, Shah's Golden Healing Ball, the Love, Peace, Harmony Rainbow Light Ball. These are instruments and tools that have infused and empowered in them frequencies that carry the highest Shen, Qi, and Jing, which is soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter. They carry the source soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter, their energies, their thoughts, their love, their highest frequencies, quite a bit higher than ours. And so when we bring ourselves, a lower frequency, into the field of a higher frequency, we have no choice but to emulate that frequency. We have no choice but to align to it. And so this is why we always want to utilize these tools. We can do a forgiveness practice by ourselves, but much greater value to do it with others and with the tools. Now Master Shah has also taught about inner souls and outer souls and of course the four powers. Briefly the inner souls are uh, the soul of the condition of depression, the soul of my sore knee, the soul of the negative mindsets that I have been holding on to. They have a soul. Those are inner souls. There are outer souls, all beings of light, our beloved creator. If you have a specific um, being, a holy being that you, that you love, beloved Buddha or Krishna or, or, or beloved Mother Mary, beloved Kuan Yin, whoever is important to you, invite those beings of light to assist you as well. When we give ourselves, um, when, when we do a practice to, to transform a suffering, one of the smartest things that you can do every time, invite in the outer souls. They're there to serve. How did beloved Jesus become such a, a great and, a, and amazing servant to humanity? He offered service unconditionally. That doesn't stop. He offered it when he was here. He offered it in the soul world. And when we call, he offers his virtue unconditionally to bless us to further clear these blockages. So why not call the outer souls? Why not utilize some of the calligraphies? Why not call Shaw's Golden Healing Ball or the Divine Love Peace Harmony Rainbow Light Ball? We have the tools. It's important to, to utilize them because what they do is they cause a much faster release of the spiritual debt when we employ them. Okay? So today, we are going to ask the soul of the greatest forgiveness, Da Quan Chu calligraphy, the countless blessings in these calligraphies to come to serve us. But we're going to chant a mantra, I forgive you, you forgive me, bring love, peace and harmony, bring love, peace and harmony. That will be the mantra that we'll be chanting. But know that the soul of Da Quan Chu calligraphy and the countless blessings in it will be coming to us as well. This is an example of, of, of a couple of the soul powers. Okay. So, wherever you're at, sit up straight, place your hands uh, one over the other on your lower abdomen. Close your eyes. If it's not uncomfortable, bring your back away from the back of the chair. Gently touching your tongue to the roof of your mouth. So, with your feet flat on the floor, relax. If it's the beginning of your day, breathe out. Prepare for your day. If it's the end of the day, breathe out. Let it all go. Keep your mind, your thoughts, and your focus in your lower abdomen. You're going to choose a specific area, either a physical condition, an emotional condition, or a mind-based condition that you would like 
to do a forgiveness practice around. Choose it now. Very good. <clears throat> For mind power, you're going to visualize golden or rainbow light, whatever is easiest for you to visualize, coming to you from 360 degrees, surrounding you uh, in your physical body, where that exact physical area is. If it's an emotion or a mindset, just visualize it coming to your heart center, okay? That's where you visualize the light. So that's your, that's your mind power. For the sound power, we're going to be chanting, I forgive you, you forgive me, bring love, peace, and harmony. For um, uh, soul power, please repeat after me. Dear the soul of my ancestors, I love you. Could you please come and do this forgiveness practice with me? Dear all beings of light that have a desire to serve at this time, could you please come and serve in whatever way is most appropriate? Dear the soul of, so if you have a specific deity, holy being, you can call them at this time, ask them to come. Ask them as appropriate, would they mind to serve you at this time? Dear the soul of Da Quan Chu calligraphy in Master Shah's books, the countless blessings transmitted to these calligraphies. I love you. Could you please come out at this time? Come to serve my request for, and now state your request. I am deeply honored and grateful. So we have connected with the outside souls. We have connected with the inside souls. Uh, we'll do that next. Dear the soul of my condition of, state the condition. I love you. You have the ability to bring healing to yourself. You have the ability to align and stabilize your condition to bring about health and wellness at the optimum levels do a good job thank you now you have invited your ancestors repeat after me if it is comfortable for you dear the soul of my ancestors i love you please do this forgiveness practice with me please come to all of my forgiveness practices because we carry collectively spiritual virtue and spiritual debt and if we do a forgiveness practice together, we could have much more enjoyable life and serve others much better. Thank you. Now we need to do forgiveness with those souls. So dear the soul of all of the beings that I or my ancestor may have brought suffering to for the condition of, state the condition, could you please come to this forgiveness? My name is, state your name three times. I wish to deeply, humbly, and sincerely apologize from the bottom of my heart. I have suffered tremendously in this area. Now I want you to state I'm going to not speak now. I want you to state to all these souls that you have called all of the suffering that you have experienced. Really tune in. What's all that suffering for this one thing that you've chosen that you have experienced? Tell that to these souls. Continue to share with them. I have suffered so much in these areas.
it has caused this problem and this problem and this problem. Share with them what problems it has caused. Now, I want you to imagine that they also had these same sufferings. Imagine thousands of people lined up in front of you and all of them can completely understand your suffering. They're all shaking their head going, yep, I know that one. Yep, I felt that one. Yes, I know that one. Yep, that happened to me too. Yep, I had all of those experiences, all thousand of them. And they're looking at you saying, but I had them because you and your ancestors had wrong thoughts, words, and actions that caused us to have them. Be very, very authentic in your request for forgiveness. I deeply and sincerely apologize. If I or my ancestors have created this kind of suffering, for you, I can never bow down enough in apology and regret. I'm so very, very, very sorry. I would never wish any suffering of this nature on any soul. But I know that very likely we have done this in the past. I understand that to ask for forgiveness is not enough. I understand that I must serve. I ask most humbly, most sincerely for your forgiveness. I wish you to know that we have learned our lessons. I wish you to know that I and my ancestors will not make these same mistakes again. I promise that if I receive your unconditional forgiveness, that regardless of receiving your unconditional forgiveness, I will continue to do better, I will be a better servant to humanity, and I will not make these same mistakes again. I wish to offer all of you my unconditional forgiveness for any harm or suffering that you have brought to my life. I release you of any spiritual debt that you may have with me. And I thank you for reminding me of the suffering I may have caused you. I am very grateful for this opportunity to receive your forgiveness. And so now we will chant, I forgive you, you forgive me, bring love, peace and harmony. And as we chant, send your greatest love and forgiveness to all of those souls that have suffered as a result of thoughts, words and actions that you and your ancestors may have contributed to their suffering. Be authentic. Let us chant with our eyes closed and our deepest love and forgiveness. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace and harmony. I forgive you, 
you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you. You forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you. You forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. Continue to chant silently. I will turn on all of my forgiveness treasures. I have over 200 of them. And I will offer a blessing with them. I forgive you. You forgive me. <coughs> Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you. You forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you. You forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, you forgive me, bring love, peace and harmony. So what I am seeing at this time is the souls that came when you called them. They and your soul are bowing down together, head to head. They are, in many cases, accepting your request for forgiveness. There is virtue being transferred to assist in the offsetting of the spiritual debt. Some of it is coming from your virtue account. Some of it is coming from your ancestors' virtue accounts. Some of it is coming from the beings of light that came to offer their service. Some of the virtue is coming from the blessings the, uh, uh, inside the Da Quan Shu calligraphy. The majority is coming from that. And some of them, some of the virtue is coming through the forgiveness treasures that I have turned on. Collectively, there is significant forgiveness being offered. There are souls that are not convinced that the lessons have been learned. They feel very slighted and very hurt. And they need to see consistency and more authenticity. But they are interested because they recognize clearly that there has been a shift. They're just not sure if it is real or if you have truly learned your lessons. But there has been a great deal, approximately between 20 and 50 percent, depending on the individual blessings for this area, between 20 and 50 percent has been addressed. So some of you could notice a significant difference, especially if you continue this practice. So now in your heart, in your mind, 
bow your heads to all the beings of light that offered their service in your heart bow your heads to the countless blessings from the Da Quan Chu calligraphy in your heart bow your heads to all of the souls that came to receive your forgiveness in your heart bow your heads to your ancestors and thank yourself for coming to today's live stream for this practice for the opportunity to do this service and as you return please share the depth of your heart and how this practice has impacted you and I want all of you to remember this is one practice for one major area of your life find two or three or four other major areas and do a consistent practice like this daily I would be very surprised if you did not have significant shift in those areas so please share for those that came in late um, welcome Janet I thought you came in earlier Esther came in a little bit late Susan Susan you truly need to watch this one again uh, based on what I've understood about some of the suffering you've been going through it could go a long way to assist you um, Pamela as well Master Jolly if you're still with us you are one of the most pure uh, servants I've come across with certainly the deepest forgiveness heart uh, Cassie I see your comment about trusting a third time when it's been broken twice it's a very difficult question to answer my encouragement to you would be to listen to my uh, Tuesday live stream I spoke about relationships specifically and forgiveness specifically in that Tuesday live stream um, you have to be a friend on my page I'm, I'm not sure if I've accepted you as a friend or not and then you can go to watch that and it will very likely answer your question and then if it does not then you can contact me through uh, my messenger and I can try to assist you at that time okay <clears throat> so uh, Sharon Dodd says thank you Master Paul you're very welcome Sharon I see you cons consistently coming I see you consistently doing the practices I am confident that it is helping you so I'm so grateful that you continue to return and Nina is also very vigilant she continues to return so you're very welcome as well Nina so I know others are still typing away they have much to share <clears throat> um, I'd like to offer my deepest gratitude to Master Shah he is um, truly an unconditional universal servant on average in this last 20 years sleeping about three hours a night um, why because the rest of the time he's serving unconditionally the rest of the time he has no thoughts of self I literally seen him starve himself because he's busy taking care of other people uh, I have seen him suffering uh, where he's he is in excruciating pain um, because he is just serving until there's nothing left to serve um, he is my my mentor and my model and he has brought this wisdom he has brought everything that you've heard here today none of it is is anything I invented it's all from this benevolent soul so if you're not familiar with him I encourage you to purchase some of his books become more familiar with with his YouTube's um, become more familiar with his website drsha.com um, as always divine excuse me special services for um, accelerating the release of these uh, imbalances is available you can contact me directly you can learn about crown chakra blessings healing and transmission systems you can learn about many different things you can do to release some of these great sufferings this practice alone as you can discover can be significant but sometimes we just need that extra boost so um, I am here to assist you with that if you would like also there are other master teachers that have these same abilities in your area you can locate them on drshaw.com uh, we're all here to serve you and so uh, I'm gonna read some more of these responses <coughs> so uh, Kristen says see love says uh, okay we'll go to Binu dear Paul I feel like I know you from past lives thank you <laughs> very possible <laughs> uh, see 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll be watching in directly after again. Stay in hospital. Still blessings to and from the ancestors have hurt in regards to addiction. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, very wise, see. Dear the soul of my baby, my, my soon-to-be-born baby, to the soul of all of my baby's ancestors, because it has a different ancestral tree than you, please come to the soul conference. Please come to this forgiveness practice. And then do a forgiveness practice so that your baby... Uh, so that if your child has created suffering to any souls in any time for any reason that it wishes to make this lifetime one of love and light to bring about the greatest service to humanity remember to call forth all the holy beings remember to to call forth the soul of doc on shoe calligraphy and so forth doing this practice with your baby teaches it at the level of soul because it has a soul the soul of your baby could be dramatically more intelligent than you okay so communicate with the soul Ask it to do these practices with you. Teach it from the beginning of its life. You could have one of the greatest servants in humanity. So Kristen, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very beautiful practice. You're welcome. Uh, Barka, thank you, Master Paul, for this powerful practice. Uh, and, and C again says she's deeply appreciative, unconditional love. You're very welcome. CJ, I have seen souls hugging and extending their hands. Was tearful for me because I can feel their presence. Yes, and you have a, a, a very powerful third eye as well, CJ. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome, Tawana. Janet says, elbow pain, much better. Uh, her family came up. They do not get along. Their souls came to me during the mantra. Very good. Always wise to invite the soul of our loved ones. When, when we do our own forgiveness practice, invite the soul of our loved ones to do it with us. No harm, and always something good can come from it. Uh, Kristen offers some some specific uh, links for those that are interested in learning more about Master Shah. Please check on those links. Um, Tawana says, felt fear, uh, tears of love. Thank you, Zilke. She feels more light. Uh, Susan will definitely watch it moving forward. Great. And Renee, love, love, love. Thank you all. If you haven't shared yet, please share. Um, uh, if you are new to this, watching it for the first time uh, after the fact and you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. Uh, that way you'll know when I go on the live stream again. To learn about divine services, contact me through Facebook Messenger or my, uh, my website listed above, or you can, you can email me asoulhealer at yahoo.com. And uh, I will return on Monday. I will have a new series. At this point, I don't know what that is, but it will be good, of course. So we say thank you, thank you, thank you to all beings of light that served here today, Divine Dawn Source. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the souls that came to offer their service. And thank you, thank you, thank you to our own soul. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Respectfully return. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you on Monday.